Hey everybody, Sammy here at SFI Sports Cards, back with another video. Today is June 10th. So today we have the Saturday morning lineup. Now, compared to last week's lineup, this one may lack the overall star power, but still has a long list of accomplishments accumulated throughout the careers of these nine players. In case you missed last week's squad, we had Lenny Dykstra leading off, Derek Jeter hitting second, Roberto Clemente hitting third, Steve Garvey at cleanup, Ken Caminiti hitting fifth, Steve Kemp sixth, Phil Massey seventh, Mark McLemore hitting eighth, and pitching was Bob Buell. The total war rating of that lineup is 355.2. Now, I'm not the biggest proponent of using more to rate players, especially total career war, but for comparison purposes, we'll use it in these videos. You know, war is a lot, this is something a lot of people use, and it does have its, its purposes, but to be honest, many people don't even know how to calculate it. And they just look at the number and judge a player's performance based on that number. Especially when they've never even watched them play. But in fact, there's no real one way to determine war. There's actually hundreds of steps to calculate the formula. It's more of an approximation that will never be precise or accurate, but... That's for a different discussion. Let's look at today's lineup, which has compiled a combined total of three league MVPs, two Rookie of the Year awards, total of 37 All-Star appearances, five World Series rings, five Gold Glove awards, five Silver Slugger awards, and three All-Star MVPs. This squad has a total war of 286.2. So, without further ado, let's take a look at the lineup for June 10th. Leading off from San Angelo, Texas, drafted in the 13th round in 1990 out of Shriner University. Playing center field. This is from the 1994 Pacific Collection. We have David Hulse. And you know something crazy? Last week's Lineup also featured someone from San Angelo, Texas. That was Steve Kemp. But Hulse was a speedy leadoff hitter, steady center fielder with the Texas Rangers, and he also played for the Milwaukee Brewers. Many of you out there may not be familiar with David Hulse. He only played five years in the majors. But I remember him well. Now, I don't know if anyone else knows this fact, but Hulse was on the field for one of the most well-known plays in baseball history. Let's take a look at the video. Seiko goes back to the wall. He looks like he's, you know, he's checking the wall. He's checking the ball. Checking the wall. The ball reaches up. It's him right back. He goes over the top. Shot will live forever. 
So I hope you like that little clip, something that uh, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with at this point if you're a baseball fan. What I love about the video is that Hulse, he just couldn't stop laughing. And Canseco tries to convince him that it went off his glove, which it uh, obviously did not. So I will always remember David Hulse being the center fielder on this play. I'm sure he is glad he was a part of it. A part of one of the craziest plays you'll see on a baseball field. So we have David Hulse hitting leadoff. Hitting second from Columbus, Georgia, drafted in the 18th round in 1981 of the January draft from Middle Georgia State University, playing second base. This is from the 1990 Toys R Us set. We have Jeff Treadway, a steady second baseman, good contact hitter, who hardly ever struck out. Treadway played nine years, primarily for the Cincinnati Reds and Atlanta Braves. Treadway, as you can see, here's his minor league numbers as well. He hit very well throughout his career in the minors. He is... One of the few players ever to successfully complete the hidden ball trick. And he accomplished this at least twice in his career. I tried to look up video, but I cannot find it. But I do love these Toys R Us cards. Love the yellow borders. So yeah, we have Treadway hitting second. Batting third from Havre de Grace, Maryland. Drafted in the second round in the 1978 draft out of Aberdeen High School, Maryland. Playing shortstop from the 1995 Fleer Ultra set. None other than Cal Ripken Jr., Hall of Famer, American League MVP in 1983 and 1991, holds the record for the most consecutive games played at 2,632. I really don't need to say too much more about him that you don't already know. An iconic name in the sport and during the mid-90s, someone that... A lot of baseball fans could um, relate to because of his hard-working ethic. And they had the strike in 94. So a very popular player. Really nice Fleer Ultra All-Star card. Wish I had the gold medallion. I'm sure I could find it for a cheap price, but um, yeah, Cal Ripken Jr., the Iron Man, hitting third. Hitting cleanup from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, drafted in the third round of the January draft out of El Camino College. Let me see what year he was drafted. Let's see. Drafted, 1968. So, he is playing left field. And this is from the 1980 top set. We have George Foster. 1977 in National League MVP, member of the Big Red Machine. In 1977, he was the first player since Willie Mays in 1965 to top the 50 home run mark with 
52 bombs, as you can see right here. A very lethal bat in the lineup. Very intimidating presence in the batter's box. We have George Foster hitting cleanup. Batting fifth from Pasadena, California. Drafted in the seventh round in 1967 of the June draft out of Pasadena City College playing third base. This is from the 1990 score set. We have the underrated Daryl Evans. Evans was the first player ever to hit 30 home runs at the age of 40. He compiled 414 career home runs and 1,354 RBIs. Arguably the most overlooked player in the 400 home run club. I believe this is his last playing days card. He was a member of one of the greatest teams of the modern baseball era, 1984 Detroit Tigers, who would start the season going 35-5. and five. Best record in history after 40 games. Postseason, Detroit went 7-1, defeating the Kansas City Royals, and then the San Diego Padres in the World Series. Statistician. Bill James, once called Evans, the most underrated player in baseball history. Due to his power, ability to draw walks, and on-base percentage, I don't know if I totally agree with his assessment, but I do say that he is very underrated. And I don't hear anyone in our hobby talking about him whatsoever. For someone who clubbed over 400 home runs. But, nonetheless, he is in the fifth spot today. Batting sixth. From Los Angeles, California. Drafted in 1968. First round pick. First overall of the January draft out of Fremont High School playing right field. This is from the 1986 top set. We have George Hendrick. Two-time World Series champion. The 1972 Oakland Athletics. And in 1982 with the St. Louis Cardinals. Hendrick was a four-time All-Star. Two-time Silver Slugger Award winner. He was really thought of as a can't-miss prospect with Oakland. But he struggled mightily, only batting a combined 209 and slug a paltry 298 with his time as an athletic. As Oakland was entering a dynasty that would bring three consecutive World Series to Oakland, Hendrick was traded before the 1973 season to Cleveland with Dave Duncan for Rory Fossey, or Ray Fossey, and Jack Hedeman. His career would then take off as Hendrick compiled a combined 267 home runs, drove in 1,111 runs, and nearly scored 1,000 runs. A good, solid player. Played a long time, 18 years. He is hitting 6th today. Batting 7th. From Seattle, Washington. Drafted in the 15th round in 1976 out of Arizona State. There, he was a member of the Collegiate Team USA in 1975. Playing first base. From the 1988 Donner set, the infamous Ken Phelps. Most known 
for being traded to the New York Yankees from Seattle for Jay Buhner. Phelps' biggest setback probably was he just couldn't stay on the field. Over 11 seasons, Phelps only played over 100 games four times. But in his prime years, from age 28 to 33, Phelps had a slugging percentage of 528, an OPS of a 911, and an on-base percentage of 388. These numbers in Seattle would prompt New York Yankees owner George Steinbrenner to bring Phelps' lethal left-handed bat and terrific on-base percentage to the Bronx. Over two seasons in New York, Phelps would only play 131 games, while the man he was traded for, Jay Buhner, became one of the most beloved players in Seattle Mariners history, where he would play 14 years. But we have Phelps in the seventh spot today. Batting eighth. From Ponce, Puerto Rico, signed in 1982 out of John F. Kennedy High School in Santa Isabel, Puerto Rico, at catcher from the 1987 Tops traded set. We have Benito Santiago. This is a beautiful version of this 87 Tops card, if I do say so myself. Known for his tremendous throwing arm, impressive nonetheless, Benny Santiago. He holds the longest hitting streak in San Diego Padres history at 34 games. That was in his rookie year in 1987. This mark is also the longest for any rookie in history. So, Benning 8th. Benny Santiago, also a force behind the plate to stymie anyone's running game. Benito Santiago. And hitting ninth, pitching from Middletown, Connecticut, signed in 1953. Out of Middletown High School. Taking the mound from the 1959 Tops set, we have Joey J. One of the original bonus babies. Jay did not play in the minor leagues. So when I say bonus baby, um, in 1953 to 1957, if a team signed a player to a contract of more than $4,000, you could be put on the Major League roster, which is exactly what happened. Jay, he won 20 games in consecutive seasons in 1961 and 1962 for the Cincinnati Reds. I do love this 59 set, and this is a beautiful card. Obviously, I love this yellow background inside of the white border. And I do love this, I call it a, a zoomed-in scope surrounding the player. When I did get this graded, I knew it was going to look great in a tux and was anticipating a pretty good grade. It did not disappoint. So, yes, batting last, pitching Joey J. A very effective pitcher in his own right. So, that's a lineup. Now, if I had to pick a captain... I guess I would have to go with uh, Cal Ripken Jr. But this team, it's very reserved. No real rah-rah guys. 
players that led by example on the baseball field. Business-like, some would say, but a very solid lineup. But, you know, I don't do this to make the best lineups or show off my best cards. I do this as a reason to dive into my collection and show cards I probably normally wouldn't on the channel. Some of them, yes, but most of them, no. Hopefully, I can bring you some stories and tidbits on some players you might not ever hear about. And, you know, that's the fun part of research researching some of these players. You get to know them better and get a better idea of how good they actually were. But on that note... That's the video for today. Tune in next Saturday for a whole new lineup that will be randomly put together by me from my collections from random boxes, random sets, random binders. I just pull a card, and if that position is not filled yet, they get entered in the lineup. So... Please support the channel if you like these types of videos. I hope everyone enjoys their weekend. And we'll talk soon. Be safe, everybody.